She's Britain's most successful Olympic female rower in history, with three silver medals to her name. And now Catherine Granger has her eyes fixed firmly on gold. It's crazy because I, I honestly never thought, I, I didn't think I'd ever go to one Olympic Games, never mind four. Uh, it, I, I kind of didn't think of it as a career, didn't think of it as a, a thing I would do with my life. And I feel massively lucky to be, to be going for my fourth. It's very unusual and it's a, it's a huge privilege. Um, and I mean, every Olympics is special, undoubtedly. Every Olympics is very different, it's a different location, obviously, different continents. Um, and a different, I guess, individually, it's a different time in your life. You, you compete with different people every four years. Uh, and I think this one is just unbelievably special because it, it is different being a home Olympics. It's, it feels very, very different being in Britain. The, the awareness is massive. You are so much more, you're, you just know that you've got this support like we've never had before. And um, people know about it, people hear about it. You switch on the TV, on the radio, in the newspapers. Every day you can see something about the Olympic Games. And, uh, and it's very special to sit and think, actually, that's what I'm doing, that's what I'm aiming for. That's, that's my big challenge for the year. And, and it's not just my challenge, it's something that everyone seems to be a part of, which is fantastic. Catherine took up rowing while studying law at Edinburgh, and it's clear that she views her time spent in the Scottish capital as hugely important. If I hadn't gone to Edinburgh, I would realistically never have, have picked up rowing. I'd never have uh, graduated the degree I had. I'd never have had the life I'm currently living. Um, I started rowing at university, but honestly without thinking it would go anywhere. Just, it was a great club, very sociable, uh, really hard working, but, but really, really friendly, welcoming, uh, all the great things university clubs should be. And then uh, yeah, I was a novice in my first year, pretty awful at rowing, if I'm honest. Spent two years not really knowing what I was doing. Always quite fit and healthy, but never technically very good. Finally learnt the technique side, and at the end of my fourth year, I went for British trials, and uh, I haven't looked back since. Catherine will be competing in the double skull with Anna Watkins, a partnership which has already resulted in two world titles. I think I'm getting less nervous as it gets close and um, I'm very pleased about that and I hope that it continues with that trend. I think um, you know, a few months ago, knowing that you know, there wasn't all that much time but knowing that the boat speed wasn't there yet, we haven't, you know, we still got trials to do and those kinds of things, um, it seemed like a big, a big deal, whereas now we've, you know, we've raced a regatta, we know that the boat speed's starting to come, it starts to feel like something we're on top of and we can get excited about it a bit more. And while Catherine and Anna will be racing on familiar territory against opponents they've already beaten, complacency is something they're determined to avoid. I've never been in this, this strong a position to win the Olympic Games before. Uh, but I think the other good thing is neither of us take any of it for granted. Uh, we certainly don't feel complacent. Both of us have our own sort of way of being quite... Um, perfectionist about, about how good it needs to be and, and how good we be, need to be in, individually together, how good the boat needs to feel and I think right on until the moment of the Olympic final we'll keep pushing our standard on and on and on and push each other on and then we'll hopefully uh, enjoy what comes of it. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.